November 2018, Menlo Park, California. Mark Zuckerberg is in his office, waiting for a report from one of his lieutenants. Dark bags hang under his eyes. It's been a grueling year. Zuckerberg has had to testify before a distrustful Senate. They grilled him about Facebook's handling of data privacy, Russian election interference, and the spread of disinformation. The public is souring on Facebook, and everywhere he turns, there's competition. TikTok's downloads reportedly exceed those of Instagram, but also of Facebook, Snapchat, and YouTube. Mark, the lasso is live. Okay, keep me updated on the numbers. Lasso is Facebook's attempt to directly compete with TikTok. It's an exact copy. Users can upload 15-second videos to this new app and set them to music. After witnessing the power of music to draw people to TikTok, Zuckerberg secured licensing deals with major record labels. Now, users can add songs to posts on Lasso as well as on Facebook and Instagram. And since he's been burned before, Zuckerberg is launching Lasso quietly, so engineers can fix any problems before users publicly vent about them. An hour later, Zuckerberg gets another call from his deputy. Mark, uh, the numbers aren't looking good. What's going on? Barely anyone is downloading it. By February 2019, only 70,000 users have downloaded Lasso in the U.S. In that same three-month period, TikTok logs 40 million downloads. For Zuckerberg, it's a humiliating defeat. And TikTok is just warming up. From Wondery, I'm David Brown and this is Business Wars. In the last episode, ByteDance founder Zhang Yiming grew TikTok by acquiring Musical.ly, another video app, and Instagram founders Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger departed the company they built after butting heads with Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. By the beginning of 2019, Zuckerberg has taken a beating. His copycat app has failed, and TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, is valued at $75 billion. TikTok anticipates some dirty tricks from Facebook. But there's another enemy it didn't count on. American regulators. This is Episode 4, Hitmaker. February 2019, Cleveland, Ohio. A 13-year-old girl sits in her bedroom watching a TikTok video of a teenage boy. He's dressed in sweats and drinking a soda labeled Yee Yee Juice. A male voice, accompanied by a banjo, sings about taking a horse to an old town road. A few seconds later, the music morphs into a hip-hop beat. The The video cuts to the same boy now dressed like a cowboy. He's got a hat, vest, and chaps. He does a mock line dance and pretends to ride a horse. When that video ends, another one automatically starts playing. It's the same song, but with a different teenager singing along before transforming into a cowboy. She squints at the bottom of the screen. The artist is Lil Nas X, whoever that is, she thinks, and the song's called Old Town Road. She jumps up and starts digging through her closet. She's gonna record her own video set to this Old Town Road clip. First, though, she has to find some Western gear. The Yee Yee Juice Challenge goes viral as teenagers worldwide join in by transforming into cowboys. The silly meme set to this song will generate billions of views. Before this, Lil Nas X was a nobody. But after Old Town Road takes off on TikTok, the song tops the Billboard charts for 19 consecutive weeks. It breaks the record for the longest run ever at the number one spot. TikTok is no longer just a short-form video app. Now, it's a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. In fact, it's a hitmaker. But there are serious challenges. 
For starters, there's the Federal Trade Commission. The FTC alleges Musical.ly, the app ByteDance acquired and folded into TikTok, illegally collected personal information from minors. TikTok has to pay a $5.7 million fine. But to a company like TikTok, that's chump change. And as for privacy, its Gen Z audience couldn't care less. The fine is a slight headache, but nothing like the migraine that's about to hit Zuckerberg. March 2019, Menlo Park, California, Facebook headquarters. Zuckerberg is at his desk reviewing some Instagram figures when he gets a call. Mark, we've got a problem. What is it? The password leaks. Brian Krebs is writing about it. Zuckerberg inhales quickly. This is really bad news. Brian Krebs is a cybersecurity reporter with a widely read blog, and he's just discovered something Zuckerberg was trying to bury. Damn it. Okay, we'll prepare a statement, but we need to stop our staff talking to the press. Zuckerberg hangs up. This is an embarrassing rookie mistake. Hundreds of millions of Facebook and Instagram passwords had been stored in plain text rather than encrypted, making them much easier to steal. When he found out about it a few months ago, Zuckerberg ordered an internal review, but kept the breach top secret. The next day, the story of the breach and the cover-up goes live. Zuckerberg scrolls the article. It's bad really bad. Hundreds of millions of Facebook users had their account passwords stored in plain text and searchable by thousands of Facebook employees, in some cases going back to 2012. Zuckerberg dials his head of PR. We need to get a statement up now. A few hours later, Instagram sends an email to notify millions of users that their passwords were exposed. They're furious that Instagram didn't tell them as soon as it discovered the problem months back. Up until now, Instagram has been sheltered from Facebook's reputation hits. But not anymore. Now, the word is that the tech behemoth doesn't care about its users' privacy, only profits. Luckily for Instagram, TikTok's also in the hot seat. April 2019, Chennai, India. A noisy courtroom in the ornate red building of the Madras High Court. This isn't a murder trial or an assault case. No, exhibits A, B, and C are TikTok videos of women dancing and preteen girls talking into their cameras. The app is off the charts in India. With more than 240 million downloads, the country is TikTok's biggest market after America. The musical numbers at the heart of Bollywood are perfect for TikTok. People love to dance along and lip sync to popular songs. But Indian officials are unimpressed with all that. What has captured their attention is the clothing they consider too revealing. They're also worried about how young TikTok's users are. India doesn't have any child safety laws governing internet use, and officials are worried about sexual predators targeting underage users. Then, there's the recent spate of deaths and injuries that have occurred while people were filming TikToks. It's all enough to prod the court into action. Order! Order! The noisy courtroom comes to attention. TikTok's lawyers are seated at the front, alongside the group that brought the suit. I hereby direct the government to prohibit new downloads of TikTok in India. I also restrict TV stations from broadcasting TikTok shows. TikTok must be banned. The news is a huge blow for TikTok. Existing users will still be able to make videos and use the app, but no new users will be allowed to download it. The Indian court even asks Apple and Google to remove it from their app stores in the country, and they comply. In one fell swoop, it's impossible for TikTok to keep growing in its largest overseas market. Jean gets a call from his lieutenant with the news. He listens intently, but wastes no time contemplating a response. We'll fight back in the courts. That will be a long road. We could step away from India, focus elsewhere. 
But Zhang knows that India will set a precedent. ByteDance fights back against the notion that it's a bad influence, arguing that only a tiny amount of content on TikTok is inappropriate. The matter will work its way through India's legal system at a hefty cost to ByteDance. But TikTok's entire business strategy rests on its adoption by young users en masse. As regulators pressure TikTok, Zuckerberg plots new ways to overpower Zhang. July 2019, Menlo Park, California. A Facebook all-hands meeting. The auditorium is filled with Facebook employees, all crowded in to hear from Zuckerberg. It's been a rough month at the social media giant. The Federal Trade Commission slammed it with a $5 billion fine over privacy breaches, including the Cambridge Analytica scandal. They've also faced political heat from 2020 presidential candidates like Senator Elizabeth Warren, who says Facebook is too big and should be broken up. Zuckerberg steps up to the mic. There's a sense of free-floating anxiety in the room. As he answers questions, he tries to put his employees at ease. But inevitably, someone asks about TikTok's growing clout and Facebook's plan of attack. <clears throat> Zuckerberg clears his throat. Well, we've added the Explore page to Instagram, which relies on an algorithm just like TikTok does. The algorithm tailors the videos and photos users receive based on their past activity. And we're making it so that the Explore page offers up more stories. Stories are casual disappearing posts that are fast becoming the primary way people consume content on Instagram. And they're a way to make Instagram look and feel more like TikTok, which has a rougher, less polished feel. But even as Zuckerberg shares how he plans to compete, he dismisses the rival app. TikTok is growing, but they're spending a huge amount of money promoting it. What we found is that their retention is actually not that strong after they stop advertising the app. So space is still fairly nascent and there's time for us to kind of figure out what we want to do here. In other words, TikTok is all bluster and there's plenty of time to beat them. But Zuckerberg's dead wrong. TikTok is spreading like wildfire. September 2019, Beijing, China. It's early morning and Zhang is already at his desk. He believes it's important to model hard work for his employees. He takes a distinctly American approach to things, even in China. He loves to quote one of Jeff Bezos's mottos, always day one. In other words, companies should operate like it's their first day and they have to prove themselves. So even though TikTok now has offices around the world, He's still grinding away as if it were a tiny startup. It's Alex Zhu, TikTok CEO, and the guy who started Musical.ly. It's late in the evening in California, so Zhang figures this must be urgent. Yi Ming, we've got a problem. What is it? The Guardian just published their piece. It's even worse than we thought. Zhang pauses. He knew The Guardian was breaking a story about TikTok because ByteDance provided a comment. He starts searching for the article. It says we have a policy to censor videos that mention Tiananmen Square and Tibetan independence. They're citing documents that were leaked to them. Authorities in Beijing are particularly sensitive about these political matters. They see any discussion of them as challenges to their authority. This is not good. We need to put out our own blog post. What TikTok wants to avoid at all costs is any impression that it censored posts during the political unrest over the summer in Hong Kong. It's an accusation that's still swirling. The company tells The Guardian that the leaked documents are old. It says those moderator guidelines were written and then scrapped well before the protests against Chinese control took place in Hong Kong. Luckily for TikTok, once again, its young users don't even seem to notice the controversy. October 2019, Winter Garden, Florida, just outside of Orlando. A freshman walks down the hallway of West Orange High School, clutching her books and phone. She passes an advertisement on a whiteboard and pauses to read it. Want to be TikTok famous? Join TikTok Club. 
After school, she heads to the classroom where TikTok Club is meeting. The desks are filled with students snacking on juice and Cheetos, waiting for the projector presentation. She sits down and the club president presses play. It's a series of TikToks that are serving as an inspiration for the club. Then they split into groups. One group heads to the hallway and learns a popular dance to teach me how to Dougie. The student cameraman takes the phone and records them. Then he clicks post to the world. It's just like drama club, but with a potentially global audience. But even as teens embrace TikTok, on Capitol Hill, one U.S. senator is watching the app's skyrocketing popularity with growing alarm. October 2019. Senator Marco Rubio writes a letter to the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Steven Mnuchin, asking the U.S. government to investigate TikTok. He says that apps like TikTok are increasingly being used to censor content deemed sensitive by the Chinese government. And he claims that TikTok's recent acquisition of Musical.ly could have national security implications. He writes, The Chinese government's nefarious efforts to censor information inside free societies around the world cannot be accepted and pose serious long-term challenges to the U.S. and our allies. It's a nightmare scenario for the app, which is counting on further expansion in the U.S., its biggest market. So Zhu goes on the charm offensive, appearing in a splashy New York Times profile. He insists that if China's leader, Xi Jinping, asked him to hand over data, he wouldn't do it. Zhang is desperate to persuade American leaders of TikTok's independence that their data is safe in his hands. But TikTok's problems with the press and American public officials are only just beginning. October 2019, Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. A large auditorium with maroon carpets and dark wooden panels. Zuckerberg steps up to a podium emblazoned with a university crest. He's dressed in a black sweater, his hair cropped short. It's, it's really great to be here at Georgetown with all of you today. People having the power to express themselves at scale is a new kind of force in the world. Facebook has been through the ringer lately with politicians and executives criticizing its role in spreading disinformation. And I understand the concerns uh, that people have about how tech platforms have, have centralized power. But I actually believe that the much bigger story is how much these platforms have decentralized power by putting it directly into people's hands. It's, it's part of this... Zuckerberg maintains his platform champions free speech. And to prove it, the company just announced it won't fact-check political advertisements or moderate comments, unlike traditional media outlets. Zuckerberg doesn't believe it's Facebook's job to be the arbiter of truth. He thought this would put him on the offensive, but now he's getting pummeled from all sides, including from critics who claim he's giving a platform to hate speech and disinformation. So he's coming out to make a rare public speech. Zuckerberg clears his throat. He looks out at the 700 students filling the auditorium, some of whom have their iPhones out to record him. And I'm here today because I believe that we must continue to stand for free expression. Then, in a move straight out of the art of war, he goes on the attack. He points his finger at a company he says does the exact opposite, ByteDance. China is building its own internet focused on, on very different values. And it's now exporting their vision of the internet to other countries. Zuckerberg references reports that recent Hong Kong protests were censored on TikTok, an accusation ByteDance has denied. He holds up Facebook as a pro-democracy tool. While our services like WhatsApp are used by protesters and activists everywhere, Due to strong encryption and privacy protections, on TikTok, the Chinese app growing quickly around the world, mentions of these same protests are censored, even here in the U.S. 
he closes with a powerful rhetorical question. Is that the internet that we want? Zuckerberg's approach isn't subtle. He's positioning Facebook as a good American company, and TikTok as a bad Chinese company, a foreign threat to freedom. In Beijing, Zhang reads the reports of Zuckerberg's speech with annoyance. He gets his head PR rep on the phone. Zuckerberg's just doing this to deflect criticism. We need to get a statement out denying the censorship. Yes, Yiming. I can't believe he would do this after copying us again. First lasso, and now clips? Zhang is talking about a new feature Instagram is testing called Clips. Users can edit videos by cutting clips together and adding music, exactly like TikTok. Zuckerberg's comments at Georgetown are salt in the wound. I will not be a scapegoat. A ByteDance spokesman sends out a statement to reporters, insisting that the Chinese government doesn't require TikTok to censor content. We have said clearly that these accusations are false. This is an unfortunate attempt by Mark Zuckerberg to redirect scrutiny onto a competitor that he's failed to copy. It should hearten Zhang to know U.S. lawmakers aren't buying Zuckerberg's hands-off approach either. Senator Elizabeth Warren sends out a scathing tweet accusing Facebook of making millions by spreading misinformation and outright lies. Mark Zuckerberg's speech today shows how little he's learned from 2016 and how unprepared Facebook is to handle the 2020 election. Vice President Joe Biden's campaign bashes Zuckerberg for using the Constitution as a shield for its bottom line. So far, Zuckerberg has only made matters worse. He's angered politicians and infuriated his chief competitor. The last thing Zhang wants is to position this as a fight between two tech companies caught in a geopolitical battle. Unfortunately for Zhang, that seems unavoidable. November 2019. Zhang is in his office in Beijing. It's been a stressful few weeks. As TikTok's usership explodes, so does the scrutiny by U.S. politicians. Two U.S. lawmakers call for a national security probe. They're concerned TikTok collects user data and censors content. Zhang's worried about what regulators might do next. Alex Zhu, TikTok CEO, called Zhang with a worrisome update. We just heard from the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. The what? It's the governing body that oversees deals between U.S. and foreign companies. Zhang takes his glasses off and rubs his eyes. Okay, what's happening? They're investigating ByteDance's acquisition of Musical.ly. Zhang furrows his brow. Why? That happened two years ago. Yes, but because we didn't get clearance from them when the deal went through, they can still investigate it now. They have the right because we access American users' data. Zhang is frustrated. He feels as though ByteDance is getting caught up in escalating tensions between China and the U.S. Zuckerberg's speech didn't help. If this government body deems the deal dangerous to U.S. national security, it could force ByteDance to sell Musical.ly, a move that would squash TikTok in the U.S. Without Musical.ly and its users, TikTok would be nowhere near as big in the U.S., Zhang bought Musical.ly to make headway with American teens. Undoing the deal would be a catastrophe for ByteDance. And this isn't just conjecture. There's a precedent. The same committee recently forced another Chinese company to give up its control of the dating app Grindr. The committee claimed ownership of Grindr might give the Chinese government access to U.S. users' sensitive personal information. Zhang sighs into the receiver. We need you to go on the offensive. Okay, what do you want me to do? Zhang thinks for a few seconds. Get out there. Do some interviews with the big papers and tell them again and again the Chinese government does not ask us to censor. Our app content policies are led by a team in America. But TikTok has another scandal around the corner. One that is going to make that claim very, very hard to back up. 
A teenage girl with long black hair sits in front of her phone's camera. It's in selfie mode, recording her face. She pulls out an eyelash curler and begins recording. The video begins like any one of the other many makeup tutorials on TikTok, but very quickly takes a turn. Hi guys, so I'm going to teach you guys how to get long lashes. So the first thing you need to do is grab your lash curler, curl your lashes, obviously. Then you're going to put them down and use your phone that you're using right now to search up what's happening in China, how they're getting concentration camps, throwing innocent Muslims in there, people that go... The teenager begins talking about what's happening to Uyghur Muslims in China. The Chinese government has been rounding up members of the minority group and putting them in internment camps. It sees their devotion to Islam as a threat to the Communist Party. The actions have been roundly criticized by human rights groups. But the government insists the camps are innocent job training facilities. The video gets shared and quickly racks up nearly a half a million likes. But then, the account gets suspended. The teenager heads to Twitter, complaining that TikTok suspended her account for spreading awareness about the Uyghurs. The New York Times picks up the story. In Beijing, Zhang reads the news and sighs. This looks terrible. He calls up TikTok's CEO, Zhu. We need to deny this and say we're looking into it. Okay, Yiming, I'm on it. And for God's sake, get her account back. TikTok writes a blog post denying they censored her. The company claims her account was banned because of a different video she posted that included an image of Osama bin Laden, a violation of TikTok's terrorism policy. Her account is restored. But the scandal cements it. TikTok has an image problem. They're going to have a harder time luring in new users if they're seen as an anti-free speech platform that kowtows to China's censors. By the end of 2019, TikTok is bringing in $18 billion in revenue with 1.4 billion downloads since its launch. Bad PR like this could topple the company just as it's fighting for its right to keep operating. As TikTok keeps picking up steam, Instagram is about to level up. Whether TikTok has the X factor, that special something that makes an app unstoppable, that is the billion dollar question. On the next episode, a global pandemic puts TikTok in the spotlight and Instagram strikes back with a new feature it pushes out to its one billion users, but TikTok has to contend with a new foe, America's highest office. From Wondery, this is episode four of TikTok versus Instagram for Business Wars. A quick note about recreations you've been hearing. In most cases, we can't know exactly what was said. Those scenes are dramatizations, but they're based on historical research. I'm your host, David Brown. Natalie Robomed wrote this story. Karen Lowe is our senior producer and editor, edited and produced by Emily Frost. Sound designed by Kyle Randall. Kate Young is our associate producer. Our executive producers are Jenny Lauer-Beckman and Marshall Louie. Created by Hernan Lopez for Wondering.